I want to tell you today a little bit about some of our awesome accessories that we have available for our Advantage lifts. We're going to talk about our RJM or the RJA, which is a rolling manual jack, air assist, or hand pump manual. Um, this jack is a beast. It weighs 365 pounds of steel, so it's a heavy duty jack. Um, and you have either a manual pump that you actually would activate and pump to raise it up on the hydraulics, or we have an air assist like is shown here today that you would hook an air hose to it and be able to uh, hit the button and, brrr, and that raises your jack up. Much faster, if it's a commercial application uh, or you're using it more often, I would recommend the air over the hand pump. So now what I'd like to do is use your imagination a little bit. We're gonna tell you how you can get this off of your trailer, your pickup, and onto your lift without hurting your back. So I want you to imagine at this point right now that this is setting in the back of your pickup bed or it's setting on your trailer. And let's say that in your shop you have an engine hoist available. Well, it's as simple as bringing your engine hoist over and you're gonna put a strap if you have two straps, you can do two to widen out the load. If you have one strap, you can do one right in the middle. And then you're actually going to pick this up, move it over to the lift, and set it down between the runways. That's one option of doing it. But let's say you don't have that, and this is on your pickup or the trailer again. So then what you're going to do is the lift that you already have built at your house, you're going to be able to back your pickup right up to the end of the lift, and then bring your lift up to the same height as the tailgate. Now you're gonna slide, grab that box and slide it off onto the runway at this point. Now you're able to lower down your lift while it's still in the crate, and then um, with the use of a wheel dolly caster, now I'm gonna lower the lift down. Jay, would you mind uh, lowering the lift please for me? So, using your imagination, it's on the crate here. We're going to lower it down to where it's level with my caster. And then we're going to break open the sides of this crate here, take the sides out, and we're actually going to just slide that off onto the dolly. So now I have the jack setting on the dolly, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. I'm giving you the concept here of how this works. So right there, now we're about the same height as what it is easily slide that out of the wood crate. Now you have the jack setting on the dolly. Now I'm able to move this 365 pound jack around using that dolly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you, we're gonna take this off with the cherry picker and put it on to this dolly and then show you how you can load and unload this lift by using this dolly. I want to go over a couple things that are important to do. Once you get this set onto your dolly, you want to do this ahead of time so that you're ready to go when you put it onto your lift. First thing we want to do is we want to lubricate these wheels. Um, there are no bearing in there, and so it works so much better when this is lubricated. This is a 365 pound jack, as I mentioned before, and it rolls much easier when these are lubed. So you'll want to take this number six Allen, loosen this set screw up, pull your axle out and then set it down with the use of a set of snap ring pliers you're going to put your snap ring in pinch it get the snap ring off remove the wheel put a little bit of axle grease that you might have in the shop uh, this is some lithium grease we're putting on here put this back on it rotates that wheel real nicely. Put your snap ring back onto it and insert it back into the shaft. And then you'll see that that wheel rolls and you won't have to, a lot of guys will take WD-40 or some kind of lubricant and just spray it 
and you'll have to redo that all the time because it, it will evaporate and dry out. If you actually put some grease in it, that will keep that wheel moving. You'll want to do that to all four of them and leave your axles loose so that you can adjust that once we get it into the lift and set on the rails. Okay, now with the lift up, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna actually roll this lift into place. How nice is this to move? 365 pounds rolls really easy. And the trick is, we're gonna put this in the lift and we're gonna turn it sideways. Now we won't have to pick this thing up because now what we're gonna do is lower the lift. Now, as you see, the lift is on the ground. Our lift setting on this dolly, this dolly is a five inch dolly. So it raises it up to where now I'm above so I can take this and just rotate it. By using that dolly, it allows it to where my wheels and axles are above it and I can turn it right in place. Now, how simple will it be? I just kind of line this up, move my axles over to where they're gonna be in line with the rails and we will raise the lift now and you'll watch it just pick it right off of the dolly. And that way we don't have to muscle this onto our lift and it's a much easier process. So we're making sure we're on our dollies, rails. Now we'll pick that up and away goes the dolly. So if you needed to move this off of the lift for some reason, uh, it was in the way. What an easy way to do that by using a wheel dolly to remove the jack. Now you've got your jack setting on the lift, setting on the rails. And what we want to do is we want to adjust to make sure we're middle of our runway. So we want the same distance between here and here. This looks like it's a little over an inch on both sides. That's going to be setting our jack right in the middle. Just like I did on the jack tray, you want to tighten one side with your number six Allen. Tighten that up to where this side is gonna be solid. And then on the other side, you wanna leave them just hand loose. Because again, you want this axle to float because these rails are not gonna be 100% true. And that allows that axle to float in there so that this jack moves really nice and easy from front to back on the wheels. And it won't get in a bind. Now you're gonna notice with this jack, this is our air assist hydraulic jack. So we, we have a hydraulic cylinder inside there and uh, we'll show that to you in a minute when we raise it up. But this one, you're gonna put an air hose to it and you're gonna push a button that's gonna bring this jack up. To lower it, you're gonna use this and I'll show you that in a second. But we also have a hand pump manual jack, which it's the exact same jack as this, but we trade out this air pump for a manual hand pump. Now it's real important, it's red in color so you'll be able to identify that. It's real important because on that pump, there is, this is a red cylinder, there is a vent screw here at the back. Very important that you loosen that screw first thing. Before you do any pumping on the hand pump, you wanna loosen up that air screw so that it, when you start pumping it, lets air come in so that it operates correctly. Uh, they close it down tight in shipping so the oil doesn't slosh around inside the case but the first thing you want to do is loosen it up before you start pumping on the pump. Today, we want to show you the air assist jack and how it operates. So what you'll do is you'll take an air hose on the quick disconnect, pop it right on. You press on this side, that's going to make the jack operate. And as you see, it's going up. You're going to hear a lock engage. You just heard it click. And you're gonna hear it click again. If you look right inside here, this is your lock dog. And so it's locking into the grooves in the back. You'll notice that I have a handle here. When I wanna lower this, I push this over toward the lift and that raises up my lock so it clears all the lock engagements. Now, 
to, if I was working on this, the nice thing about this jack is when I'm working on it, I'm going to lower this down. It's going to set onto the lock. It takes all the pressure off of this hydraulic cylinder that I was telling you we have inside there. Now it's setting very solid on the lift and your car, when you've raised it up, is now very solid. You don't have any teetering going on. These arms telescope out to 66 inches of frame width. So you can get out to the outside of a frame to be able to pick the front of the car up or the rear of the car. Very nice. That comes included. You're going to get with this a set of rubber pads because sometimes you're working on an old street rod that doesn't have an outside frame and you're picking up under an undercarriage. And you can use these blocks, they're a dense foam, and you can actually pick up from this surface on the jack. Now, we've had some customers say, well, hey, this is a little too thick for my low car. You can easily cut this and get it to the depth you need. All it is is a barrier between the, the frame and the metal here, so you're not metal on metal. Um, you'll notice it comes with two of the rubber pads. You can use this on a real low setting vehicle, or we have some stacked on adapters. If you need to get to a surface that is, you need to raise your pad height up because you have undercarriage on the car that would hit, this is going to raise that lifting height by five inches. You get two five inch adapters and you get a two inch adapter on both sides. So you can actually lift your pad height up by seven inches by adding the extensions to it. And then with our jack, we have a nice place to store them right here on the back so they're out of the way so you don't lose them. To operate this to go back down, at this point it's resting on these locks, right? So I'm going to raise the lift back up. I'm going to push this lock handle over. As you see, it's raised. And then I'm going to lower this side of the jack and now I'm coming down. I want to hold this open until I get past that last lock or until the lift is about two inches from the bottom and then I can let go of my handle and it'll go all the way down. Now another great feature about this jack is it is only, it's less than three inches of drive over clearance. So it's very low. Porsches, Corvettes, well, you can drive right over this when it's installed on your lift. It's not something you have to remove just to drive a car onto it. One thing that I want to talk to you about, when the, the lift is on the lock and I was telling you how stable it is, I want you to imagine your car is on here right now and you've raised this lift up and you're doing brake job on the front of your car. When you get it to that height, we don't recommend you raising the lift up and down while the car is supporting, the jack is supporting the car off of the lift. 